Lovely. So thanks very much for joining me today um, for our session exploring how to get a job. Now, before we get on with the session itself, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Wadjuk people of the Nungar Nation, including their elders, both past and present. And I'd also like to acknowledge and respect the continuing culture and the contribution that they make to the life of this region. Now, in terms of a little bit of background about me, in case um, you haven't come across me or my business before, um, I've been running Pauline Tarrant Consulting now for the last seven years and been doing HR now for about 20 years. And during that time, um, I've offered a variety of different services um, to different organisations. So I've been a keynote speaker at conferences and seminars delivered lots of different workshops and training sessions, some of those in-house designed specifically for that workplace and some of them have been general sessions out in the community, including a lot of work for the Small Business Development Corporation. I help organisations with HR health checks um, to understand where they might be able to boost their compliance or boost other elements of their HR processes. I help review HR documentation, and that could include contracts or policies and forms and so on and so forth. I support people and organisations around people performance, um, and that's sometimes using tools such as DISC and um, also other um, tools as required. Uh, help out with people technology, so that can look like different HR system reviews and implementations. People strategy, looking at the overall um, people strategy of an organization and wellness at work. And that is where I like to bring in some of my training as a yoga instructor, just to get the best out of sessions. So uh, that can include all sorts of uh, physical movements and things to help us perform at our best. So our session today, we'll be having a little bit of a look about where to work, look for work at the moment. We'll take a quick look through your online presence, some principles there that you can apply. Um, we'll look at some top tips for your resume and also explore some top tips for interview. And as I mentioned at the end, we'll have plenty of time to answer your questions. So some great places to look for work at the moment. Uh, that could include spreading the word with your friends and perhaps family and other connections. Uh, because as soon as people are aware of you looking for work, you never know, they might come up with certain ideas um, of uh, places that they might have heard of jobs coming up soon. Because it's always good to get in early if you're going to apply somewhere. So a little bit of inside information is often very useful. It's also useful in terms of understanding if it's somewhere you actually want to work. Um, there are some employers out there where perhaps they are not places where you might want to go. Um, some are great, providing safe um, uh, workplaces with a really great culture and others uh, not so much the case. Another place to potentially look at work is with past employers. So um, this could be people that you've worked with a couple of years in the past. It could be people um, who have managed you in the past. So there's no harm in getting in touch with old managers and bosses and just saying, hey, look, um, are you aware of any opportunities? They might have things coming up and um, hopefully you um, made a good impression last time you were working with that person and might help your um, opportunity of being re-engaged. Another good thing about looking at past employers is maybe you're somebody who has been working in a sector that's been impacted by the recent COVID-19 restrictions. So it might be that you can actually get taken on. You might have been made redundant back in, let's say, March time when things had really started to change quite significantly. Um, and you could be taken back on through the JobKeeper scheme. There's been a lot of this in the press recently. So it's worth contacting um, recent employers if you have been recently made redundant or stood down um, to see if they are applying for that. It's easy for employers to apply. They just go via the Australian Taxation Office website, the ATO website, and they just look up JobKeeper payment and it's all there at their fingertips. And so if their organisation is an eligible organisation and you are an eligible employee, um, which includes being re-engaged potentially after redundancy, um, or perhaps if you're stood down at the moment, um, then you could actually get access to that payment. 
And it's a really good payment to get access to because it's one of the higher ones that you can get. So it is $1,500 per fortnight. And that is more than what you get if you were on the job seeker arrangement, for example. So if you were working at a pub and then you got um, stood down or made redundant in March, let's say, then now is the time to look at if that pub is going to be reopening further down the track, getting hold of that payment, even though you might be getting something from Centrelink right now. Um, it's good to have a think about um, other um, connections you might have through educational institutions. So some um, educational institutions um, run job boards and have virtual job boards to so find out if there's anything there. Um, and it might be that um, people that you have um, come into contact with, be that fellow students there, they might be aware of um, jobs coming up or even um, any of your tutors during that time might be able to help. It's good to have a look at industries that are expanding because um, you're more likely to get a job in those sorts of areas. And have a think about how you can really spread your search out. So um, popular websites for posting jobs include Gumtree, LinkedIn and Seek. But it's worth having a trawl around through other websites and also um, having a look at any um, little um, notice boards that might be up in local shopping centres. Sometimes there are some ads in the local community newspapers, although not that many. Um, and sometimes there are some in print in some of the larger publications too. Um, there's other websites like Ethical Jobs out there. So they're actually gaining in popularity and have got quite a few interesting roles. Ethical jobs actually do a lot with the charitable sector, including social and community services. And a lot of those services have actually been um, able to continue operating pretty much as normal in this environment. So that might be a possible area to look at in your search. And company websites. So it might be that an organisation knows that if they put an ad up on Seek right now, they're just going to get absolutely inundated with applications. And so they know they can get enough people just by advertising for free on their website rather than spending a couple of hundred bucks out on Seek. So if there's a company that you'd really like to work for that you think you've got the right kind of skill sets for, feel free to go direct to that company website. It also shows that you're really motivated and you want that job at that company and not just any job that comes up. You might also like to think about agencies. So if you are out of work at the moment, or perhaps you're working less hours because there's been cutbacks with your current employer, then agencies can offer temping roles. And there are roles available right now. Um, there might be a little bit more competition for them, um, but they are available nonetheless. So it's worth considering that as an option. Now, the sorts of industries that are in decline at the moment, and perhaps you've been working within one of these, and this is why you're on the webinar today. Things like general retail, so your average high street stores that are selling things like clothes and shoes and um, bits and pieces like that um, are really suffering at the moment. There's not much footfall in shopping centres. People are being encouraged only to shop for food right now. And unless you've got a really great online um, business platform that supplements the retail shop front um, that people would normally visit then those sorts of general retailers are likely to be suffering right now. Um, hospitality is another sector that's declined quite significantly with the closure of premises that um, are, um, include pubs and restaurants and a lot of cafes have shut. Some are still doing some work of course through um, their takeaway service but most cafes that I've spoken to that are doing that have had to lay off staff just to survive. So um, there's not going to be too many opportunities in that space at the moment. Um, hairdressing and beauty, because of the restrictions there, have taken some significant cutbacks because these premises have just had to close. Travel, of course, nobody's really going too far right now. Nobody's booking overseas holidays, really, unless they're super optimistic. But even then, there's not many um, web, uh, airlines actually offering flights right now because they know that they're simply not going to happen. Um, events is a space where there's been some considerable cutbacks. And the unfortunate thing around the event space is often that will be significant gatherings. So you're looking at um, could be hundreds or thousands of people involved. So it's going to be a considerable time before the event space really gets moving again. 
and taxi and rideshare services have also taken a bit of a hit there. Um, some rideshare services have actually tried to pivot into a new sector to try and keep their, um, some custom going towards their drivers. So uh, there are services that have decided to switch into being a delivery service um, and uh, tapping into that market where a lot of people are now doing online shopping or perhaps um, there's lots of different things to deliver and pick up um, because of different ways of operating. And uh, recently on the ABC, they actually released some information and around where job ads are actually falling. So things like sport and recreation have had some quite considerable cuts there. Advertising um, media admins actually been um, reduced. And, and this is um, not necessarily saying that there's um, a big decline in work always. Sometimes it's just a matter of people are just not leaving their jobs right now because they know that there's not much of an opportunity to enhance what they've got elsewhere. Um, and also employers are really starting to um, want to retain staff and are able to do so through things like the job keeper scheme. But it's not all bad news. There are always some industries, no matter what, that will keep growing. So cleaning is an area right now where there is considerable growth, where there are extra cleans, there are extra deep cleans happening, um, and um, a lot of extra precautions being taken in schools, in workplaces, all sorts of other different public areas, um, be that public transport or all sorts of different elements. So, Cleaning is a real growth sector, so that could be an area of opportunities. Health is a real place of uplift and um, the uh, different uh, state government uh, Department of Health um, have been advertising for a whole range of different health related roles, not just the nurses on the front line, but a lot of people behind the scenes as well to keep everything running effectively in the event of having a surge in cases. And luckily things that seem to be tracking well at the moment, but, um, and hopefully it will stay that way, but they need to be prepared just in case. Of course, we've all seen that uh, the supermarkets have been pretty busy with everyone stocking up on their toilet roll and their canned food and their pasta and food retail has really gone crazy. Um, some of this is also driven by our behavioural change. So a lot of us are actually spending time at home now rather than being out and about. If we're working from an office in the city, we might pop down to the local um, food retailers um, that are, or cafes to sort of go and get a, a pre-made lunch. Whereas now people are actually making their food from home or if you work in an industrial estate somewhere, you'd pop down your local sandwich bar and uh, go and get your, your lunch there and that's just not happening. So food retail has really picked up. Um, digital specialists, there's a real um, pickup in that area as well. So you might have heard a lot about Zoom and please rest assured the passwords you've been provided to get access today help to protect us from being Zoom bombed. Um, and um, there are a lot of IT specialists that are um, working really hard right now and recruiting as well to get other support people so that um, they can make sure their clients are getting um, a really good digital experience. They can keep their businesses running. Uh, family support is an interesting one where um, this has come up, of course, with the restrictions around schools and it may be that you have families who perhaps both parents are working, they can't homeschool, they don't really want to send their kids back to school. Perhaps um, someone in the family has got some kind of um, issue with their immunity and so they don't feel safe doing that. And so home tutoring is actually skyrocketing right now and also home um, in-home childcare. So looking at nannying. So there's a, a lot of um, extra work that's um, been popping up around there. And, and also it may be that people, um, perhaps they haven't, um, um, got work that is um, stopping them homeschooling their kids, but maybe they just uh, might not feel like they really want to be doing that. So I'm certainly um, no good as a homeschooling teacher, so I'm, um, I'm uh, hoping to leave that to the experts and hoping the schools stay open for my kids over the next few weeks and months. Um, some manufacturing industries are really seeing um, an uptick as well, so it's worth having a bit of a look around in there. Some Food businesses are doing okay. It all depends on where their exposure is right now, if it's to the general hospitality sector or, or in retail there. 
and transport and logistics is really booming. So there's a lot of people with a lot of time on their hands that are buying a lot of things from the internet. So um, I think I have never recalled a time when I've seen the courier delivery vans whizzing up and down our street ever um, so much in the past. So uh, there's still roles in those sectors. So there's still roles that are being advertised. Um, but as I mentioned, it's really good to get in there early and good to make the most of any connections that you might have. Now, in terms of having a look at your online presence, it's good to make sure that your resume looks good. There are job search sites where you can actually post your resume online. So Seek is one where you can actually have a profile on there. Also have a think about your LinkedIn profile. Um, are you connected to all the people that you've worked with in the past? Get some recommendations on there. Make sure that it reads well. Um, make sure you've got your achievements in there, including any educational achievements as well as any in the workplace and also have a bit of a think about what your social media profile says about you. Now um, I actually do uh, different volunteer work out in the community and one of the things that I've done on, um, a bit of recently is uh, before the, uh, the shutdowns were um, some workshops with the Matera Foundation helping um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people seeking work to take those steps into work and one of the lecturers there shares a story about this one guy who was in the process of being offered a job and then they had a bit of a look around on Facebook and saw what his profile picture was and he was there um, with a couple of knives in some crazy sort of uh, quite aggressive looking pose and they basically ended up withdrawing his job offer. So you might have a great social media profile that's out there um, that's great for your mates but might not be so good for um, a potential employer. So have a think about what sort of photo you can put up there. Still reflect your personality, it can still be fun um, but make sure that it's appropriate and it's not going to reflect badly um, if a potential employer sees it. And also have a think about the sort of language you put out there and um, it's not about sort of quashing your um, your passions and desires in life it's just about going well this time if you're looking for a job it's best to set yourself up for success also have a think about what your email address says about you I have reviewed a lot of resumes over the past year or so and I'm still shocked at what some people think is okay as an email address um, so um, yeah, if you're hunkydude69 at hotmail.com, it's really not going to go down too well if you're applying for, you know, a, uh, let's say, a finance officer role somewhere. I mean, you never know, it might be an all female re recruiting team and it may go in your favour, but it's best not take the risk. And uh, think about, let's just have your normal name um, and there's plenty of places you can sign up for a free account a free email account and it also if you have a separate email account just for your job applications it makes it much easier for you to keep track of what you might have sent out to people and also any correspondence coming in so if you receive an email about a job interview then you can get straight to it. it's not buried in amongst all the other chitter chatter you might get in your inbox now, in terms of looking at your resume, it's good to think in the shoes of the recruiter. What is the recruiter looking for? What are the key attributes that they want to see in a person's application and make it easy for them to find them? So if they're looking for somebody with customer service skills, make sure that's clear in terms of you've got those skills and you're putting in some good examples of where you've put them to good use and got a really great result. It's good to think about length too. So um, with that, Talk about the Goldilocks length, it's not too long, not too short, it's got to be just right. So ideally have two pages, um, three pages max. If you start rambling on for five pages, you can guarantee that the recruiter has not necessarily um, gone through it all in great detail. Um, I've got a, a buddy who wrote a really great book called Career Karma, his name's Jeff, James Fairburn, he recruits in Perth. And he did a little bit of research and recruiters will spend about nine seconds reading your resume. That's nine seconds. So if you haven't got it straight down to the point there and then, you could be missing out on a job role. So that's where it's so important to keep 
your content concise. And by concise, I don't mean as in make the letters really concise and have it about a size three font. Um, make it a nice legible font, not too scripty or anything. Um, nicely um, reading in Arial or something like that that's really basic, um, easy to read, no smaller than about a 10 point font. Um, and then it makes it as easy as possible for that person to have a good look through it. It's good to focus on your achievements and accomplishments. There's resumes out there and they read pretty much like a job description of, oh, I coordinate deliveries for the warehousing team. It's like, well, that doesn't really tell me anything. Um, how often are you doing it? And what sort of results? Are you troubleshooting? Have you had some really great stories to tell about how you've actually enacted that? So have you won a, an award for most efficient um, processing or whatever that might be? So something that can add a little extra flavor and get, um, help people understand who you really are and how you can perform. Now, when you see roles advertised, uh, sometimes they don't ask for a cover letter. But it's good to include one just in case because it shows that you are taking that extra step. You are happy to make the extra effort to apply for that role. This isn't just another job. You care about that role. You care about working for that company. And so please include that, that cover letter. It's worth having a think about keywords because there are some organizations that use software as an initial filter and you don't want to get kicked out at an early round because you haven't um, put those keywords into a document. Um, it is a bit artificial, it is a bit annoying, but um, if you have those keywords in your experience, make sure you're using them. And the keywords are the sorts of words that you'll see in the job ad. It's good to have a chat with somebody who you know who works at the organisation. You never know, they might be able to put in a good word for you. Um, and also they might let you know about other jobs that are coming up. So it might be that there's only one job advertised right now, um, but there's another six coming. And so, you know, even if you've been unsuccessful this time around, maybe you got to the interview stage, you may be considered for one in future. And um, look, in these interesting times, you could always consider an alternative approach to submit your application. Um, I have had um, a couple of and interesting ones, make sure it's not too odd and make sure it's quite appropriate. So uh, there's a guy in Perth by the name of Barry Newman Sparks who actually uh, wrote a book and um, in there he's got a tale of where he was applying for a job in a wine um, distributor and so he was late, he'd missed the deadline, but he decided to put a message in a bottle and then send that bottle round <laughs> with his job application inside the empty wine bottle going, sorry, it's late. I was spending my time enjoying your most recent um, recommended wine here and it was a very enjoyable job. Um, and uh, please accept my application for this job role. And he got offered the job. Um, don't go too bonkers with this, but uh, look, sometimes these things work. Like a couple of years ago, there was a graduate walking down St. George's Terrace and he had a billboard on um, saying something to the effect of, please give me a job. And he ends up getting a job within two days. So we don't want to see everybody doing this and we need to make sure that you're following proper hygiene and, so, and the physical distancing side of things. Um, but it's worth considering other options. So if you know that there is somewhere um, that has a job vacancy that might not have been advertised yet, feel free to go and perhaps deliver that um, in person, providing you can, of course, adhere to the physical distancing and have it printed on a nice piece of paper there. It's good quality print on there. Um, so if you've got a dodgy inkjet cartridge or something, get a new one, get it printed nicely um, and um, hand that over. And you never know, that might get to the right person's desk much quicker than electronic form. So all sorts of other different things that you can consider in your search. Now in terms of your applications that are going out there, it's good to think about quality rather than quantity. As a, somebody who sits there on the other end of the SEEK portal receiving applications, I know that the person who's applied two minutes after um, that job role has gone live has not tailored the job to what you are looking for. They haven't tailored their application. And um, they're probably just looking for a job, necessar not necessarily a job for that particular organization. So have a think about quality, really customize each of your applications for the role that you're going for. And 
only limit it to um, a couple every day, really. Um, follow all of the instructions. So if it asks you to provide a resume no more than two pages, make sure it's on two pages. If it asks for a cover letter, make sure you include a cover letter. Because in these times where there's a lot of people applying for a role, somebody who hasn't done something, like maybe their resume is too long or whatever the issue might be, then that can be in a way that somebody is actually then um, rejected from the process. Now, we do have somebody who's just trying to dial in, but um, that's all okay now. Now, in terms of um, other um, good things to look at is applying early. So maybe not straight away when something's posted, um, but certainly in the first few days, because sometimes a job ad will be advertised and it will say, okay, well, um, it's um, two weeks before the closing date and then they'll have such an influx, they'll actually shut it a few days early. So please, just um, get in there as soon as you can, just in case um, things do change around a date there. Another thing to do is to think about following up on your application. So with that, you might want to put a call into the organization just to um, get some information or advice. Maybe you do that before you put in an application or maybe it's afterwards just to check that it is there because it's another way of having a touch point with somebody where you can be made memorable. Please don't make yourself memorable for all the wrong reasons. There are sometimes times where um, hiring managers and recruiters get driven crazy by somebody who is constantly emailing and ringing and hassling them. And um, that might mean that they go, you know what, this person's just high maintenance and um, we're not gonna proceed. Okay, so pre-interview, um, have a think about your voicemail. So if it goes, hey dude, what's up? That might not quite cut it for the sort of uh, employer that you're actually applying for a job with. So not just get in the email address professional, but have a think about your voicemail too. It's good to ask an honest person for a first impression. So um, if you've got a friend or a family member that you really value what they say and you know that they're gonna tell it to you straight, um, get dressed up in your outfit um, and um, then ask for their impression. So um, you might think that the, your new, huge, um, really loud, crazy, dangly earrings are the best thing since sliced bread, but maybe that person might go, hang on a minute, um, I think maybe you should tone it down because the first thing I see is the earrings. I don't see your smart, smiling face. I don't see anything else. It's too much of a distraction. Or maybe um, the clothes are a little bit too crazy, a little bit too loud, and you just um, get that impression from somebody. It's invaluable. And it's good to get somebody's impression of your application as well. So have somebody have a look over it, pick up those spelling mistakes, pick up any things that don't make sense. Because for somebody who doesn't know um, the intricate detail of what you do at work, um, they're a great person to have a look at proofreading because if you've lapsed into jargon and things like that that might have fitted one workplace, you need to have a think about how do I phrase this so that anybody can understand what I was doing here. It's good to do your homework on an organisation, so have a good old trawl from their website, have a bit of a Google as well, see what's come up in the news recently. Have they won any awards or any other interesting things? You could drop those little um, bits of knowledge and information into the cover letter as well, to show that you've really done your homework there. And it's good to prepare some smart questions. Prepare several because you might find in the course of the interview that they've all been answered. Um, so there might be certain things around what's happening in the future of the organisation, maybe what changes have you had to look at in the um, face of COVID-19 or um, how do you think things are going to evolve over the next few months? What are your biggest challenges? What would be my biggest challenge in this role if I were to be successful? All those sorts of things. And of course, before you get to interview, also identify some referees um, that are going to be available at that point in time. Um, so you've probably already spoken to some before, but just make sure that they're not going to be unavailable. So it could be that um, people are in an area where um, it might be difficult to contact for some reason. So just making sure that um, that's all okay there. So pre-interview, it's good to have a think about um, what sort of um, questions that you might be asked during that interview. 
and um, then you can think about some potential responses for that. And that can be based on past experience or perhaps you know somebody um, who might be good at pulling those sorts of questions for you. And also prepare some stories. So you might want to start writing out some stories of things that really demonstrate and articulate your skills and your passion and your top achievements in your working career so far. And then you'll have those on the tip of your tongue when you're asked to give some examples within an interview. Now it's good to prepare for the selection process that you have ahead of you. Um, so that could be um, that you have a telephone interview to start off with, and this is often done as a pre-screening in a lot of organisations. There might be video interviews, and that isn't necessarily using a platform um, like Zoom or Skype for a live interview. It may be that there's pre-recorded questions and you need to answer those pre-recorded questions. So the same sort of principles apply. Dress smart, even though you might be talking just to your laptop. Um, rather than seeing anybody at the other end. Make sure that um, you have good internet um, availability, your bandwidth's looking good at that time. Um, and um, if it's on a rainy day and um, you're just doing a pre-recorded one, perhaps you just um, delay it till the next day if you possibly can, so you can get a better, clearer signal on there. Also have a think about other noises and distractions. So you might want to get um, if you've got a dog, get the, somebody to take the dog for a walk so the dog isn't barking in the background and things like that, but can be distracting for you and also distracting for the person viewing the video. Ability tests are sometimes there, um, so that could be testing your mathematical ability, verbal reasoning, things like that, or personality profiling, that can also be part of a selection process. Now, you can see at the bottom it says assessment centres and that's crossed out. Hopefully no employers are inviting large groups of people together in a room to run through an assessment centre right now. It might be that they're doing a virtual one and that's fine, but hopefully it's not. Let's get everyone together for a big group interview and an activity and let's assess people from there because that's not really working within the current COVID-19 guidelines. So in terms of your interview, um, it's good to think about your self-care, what gets you in the best space for being in an interview situation. Perhaps you need to take a bit of time out for a bit of exercise, a bit of time in nature, a bit of fresh air. Um, what gets you into your best spot? So um, look at doing that. Be a little early, so prepare to log on early just in case you have any technical difficulties. It's just like turning up to an in-person interview. Get there a little bit early and then you can account for any traffic problems or anything on the way. It's good to be polite to everybody that you meet, even virtually. So you might be talking to somebody who is um, in admin, setting up the interview to start off with, and they're often asked for your, their opinion. So it's good to be polite to them too. Always ask a question and hopefully one of your pre-prepared smart questions um, is something that you can ask that's relevant in that um, particular meeting. It's good to be healthy, so if you are coughing and sneezing and things like that, then it's not going to send a great first impression. Um, and if we're in a situation where we can revert back to in-person interviews soon and you've got any potential symptoms, particularly if they look like they could be COVID-19 symptoms, please just delay the interview. And above all, be your best. So post-interview, it's really great to thank that interviewer um, afterwards. You might want to drop them a quick note via email. Um, and also, if you're not successful, then follow up with them and ask for some feedback. It can be really useful to know how close were you to getting offered a job. If you were really close and you're leaving a really good lasting impression right now, you might still get a job offer further down the track because they might go, oh, you know what? We had only one role, two great people, and then the next job's yours. So it's always good to leave that lasting impression. And have a bit of a think about what would you do if you're offered the job? So how can you prepare that? So if it is a job where to start off with, you have to work remotely, do you have the right space to work from home? Have you got internet set up? Have you got a, a good space or are you just gonna have to make do on your coffee table? Can you do something a little bit different? So if you are in a situation where you are getting some knockbacks and in a market where there are a lot of people applying for fewer jobs, 
jobs, then it's worth actually having a look at a few other elements as well as looking at your ongoing applications for roles. So you could consider temping with an agency, so sign up there, it's a great way of getting some experience in a broad range of sectors. You could look at additional training and the great thing is right now there's a lot of institutions that are offering up some nice short sharp training packages that are free or substantially discounted from their normal rates. So it's a good time to start upskilling. You might want to think about what sort of volunteer work might also help you make some connections and also give you some relevant experience in the sector you're looking to get into. It's a great way of projecting that kindness out into the community as well and doing a, a really great thing and getting some personal reward um, at the end of the day for knowing that you've been able to help others. You might even want to consider relocating. So there are roles out there, for example, in the agricultural sector where there are um, periods of, where there's seasonal work available and you could relocate for a period of time to actually undertake seasonal work there. Um, there are some significant skill shortages out in regional areas. So if you're open to relocating, that might be an option for you. And have a good old look through SEEK for non-Perth roles if that's something that you're looking at. Um, because um, I've actually assisted organisations in the past trying to recruit people and it's really, really tough if you're in a regional, rural and remote area. So continue setting your daily goals, have a think about what sort of things you want to achieve in terms of how many job applications you want to get out there, what you want to do with any online training you might be going for, and make sure you keep a good record of those as well. So that if you do get a call, you can go, oh yes, I did submit this um, application. Here's a copy of the resume I sent for this role and everything else like that. So it's always handy to be organized. Now I did mention self-care and there are some free sources of help there out in the community. So um, Helping Minds is now providing free support to everyone in Western Australia and the Northern Territory. So all you need to do is ring up their 1800 number and then you can actually book in for a session. And so they do these via phone or video counselling and it's all trained mental health professionals conducting these sessions and they're available between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. each day. Now, if things get really tough, then of course there's Lifeline available for people in crisis. Beyond Blue has got some great resources. And if it's an emergency situation where someone is in danger of um, being harmed or harming themselves, then please call 000 where you can get the support you need to get through that particular crisis. If your issues are more around a financial sense, Right now, then there's financial counselling available and information free through the National Debt Helpline and the numbers up there on the screen. And there's also some really cool tools on Money Smart website, which is a government website that offers information and advice on how to manage your money. Now, unfortunately, in this time where people are isolated in the home, sometimes with violent partners, um, then there have been um, uh, there's been a surge in domestic violence issues and there are helplines available for people experiencing that um, within um, their environment. So that's 1-800-RESPECT for that. And there's also the men's line and men's referral um, service available for people using violence that want to stop. Uh, there's a kids helpline as well available for young people and um, so that's available for free another 1800 number there um, of course kids have had their lives upset as well they may be concerned with what might be happening if their parents are out of work they've had um, big social upheaval potentially not being able to see school friends and things like that so um, there are challenges for um, younger people as well in times like this so now we come to the end of the formal presentation and it is an opportunity for you to ask some questions. So feel free to take advantage of the chat box up there and um, pop your questions up in the chat box. And I'm just about to unmute everybody as well so that we can um, also ask questions via um, the um, normal um, verbal way as well. So I'm just having a little look now and um, on here I've got a great question in already from Kai 
Um, this is around um, what do you do about your resume when you've got a really diverse career and um, you've got different industries. Yours is seven pages at the moment. Is it asking for trouble? Um, I would say that um, it's good to try and refine that down to three pages if you can. For older jobs, so anything more than 10 years ago, you might just put down the employer um, and what your role was. And you could include um, with your application a note to say there is a more detailed resume available on request. Um, and this is your concise version um, that you've got available here and now. The only time you might change that um, around experience that you've had perhaps more than 10 years ago is if there's something in there that's very relevant to what you're applying for today. Um, you might want to just put in maybe a line or two um, of bullet points around that, but really try and cut it down because particularly in a market like this right now where there's going to be a lot of people applying for roles, um, recruiters just don't have the time to get through seven pages and they might miss something really valuable. So if you can make their life easier and stick it down to only about three pages, then that's great. Um, Andy, similar question on there. So hard to condense 40 years into two pages without leaving off some great achievements. You're right, it is, it is really tough. And that is where it's all about going, okay, what are the biggest achievements? What are the most relevant achievements? And it's good to keep those resumes that you've got that are longer, that might be five or seven pages, because you can use that as being your source that you actually do your copying over into what's gonna be applying for a particular job because there'll be some achievements that are just not relevant for roles that you're applying for. And it's nice to know that you're a high achiever, but um, really keep it focused, keep it to the point. And um, you can take a copy of that extended resume into your interview. Hopefully you get an interview and then you can share that um, with other people, virtually of course, <laughs> if you need to. Um, hopefully we'll be back to in-person interviews soon. Um, so uh, yeah, have a look at things from there. Okay. And yes, there's a, a post up there about um, the information. Um, there's a, a jobs hub initiative there from Minister Cash that's available as well. So that's www.dese.gov.au and that's under the COVID-19 jobs hub. So there's a great place to um, go and get some additional information there. Okay. So I'm unmuting you now. So if you haven't had the chance to ask your question yet, please fire away. I'm Pauline, it's Kate here. Um, thanks for a great presentation. It's been really wonderful. Um, and I also have that, that thing of having a very diverse uh, career um, with uh, a very varied skill set. Um, but I'm actually looking to go cross sector at some point or toying with that idea. So how then do you break into a completely new sector where you're competing with people who might have already had uh, a valid experience within that sector? Yeah, that's a really great question, Kate. So with that, um, there's a couple of different approaches you can look at. In the past, there's bound to be some transferable skills that you've picked up in other industries. So it's about highlighting those in your experience to date. Um, so if you were an employee in a certain industry, okay, what is relevant? So if you were in hospitality, okay, what could cross over into manufacturing, let's say, um, where it might be that, okay, so the ability to work as part of a team was something that's critical. You had to respond quickly to different fluctuations in workplace demands. Those sorts of things, you know, the ability to prioritize well. Um, so it's picking up those common themes. Have a good think about what's being asked for in um, this, ad, uh, this job that you're actually applying for and what can come across. Another thing you can look at, of course, is going back to, are there any short training courses that you could undertake right now that are available for free or subsidized? Um, is there, um, are there internships? Is there work experience? Is there um, volunteer? Um, positions that are available right now where you can start to pick up some experience and having volunteer work shows that you really are keen and motivated to go and um, help others, um, shows that you're sort of generally a good human being, um, but you're also really keen to break into that sector. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, thanks. Lovely. Okay, has anybody else got any other questions?
Okay, so I can't see anything else coming through. Pauline, on I've got, the, oh, I've got yes. one here. It's Agatha, and yeah. again, it's you know always very useful. Um, how important do you think uh, to update your LinkedIn profile and getting um, additional, I guess you know, uh, testimonials or, or some sort of uh, recommendations from people in your LinkedIn? Do you think? Yeah, that's a really great question, Agatha. And I'd say, look, your LinkedIn profile is really important. It's like having a big billboard out there with your resume on because recruiters using the LinkedIn recruiting tools, actually um, there's built in software within LinkedIn that highlights candidates that will fit the profile of a job role. So if you've got a complete profile, which really does showcase your experience, your skill sets, you've got some endorsements, you've got some really strong recommendations and testimonials from people as well. It really does actually set you up really well for being headhunted for roles, as well as setting you up well for roles that you might apply for. Because there's some interesting research that showed that people tend to, um, let's say, exaggerate more on their resume um, that they'd send in for a job than they would on LinkedIn, because they know that they can get busted on LinkedIn by their previous employer or their previous workmate. So exaggeration on there um, is a pretty bold thing to do. And so employers will sometimes actually go to that um, that LinkedIn profile as a point of reference to go, okay, well, let's, let's have a look at and see how honest <laughs> this profile really is. So getting a good profile on LinkedIn, absolutely essential, just like the other um, social media platforms, really important to have a good professional photo. So if you've got a photo of yourself holding onto a glass of wine or with you, you've got someone's arm around you because you're at some social function, just have a think about getting yourself a really good alternative profile photo because they show that people who have profile photos are more likely to get their um, LinkedIn profiles looked at. It's a huge difference. It's something like 17 times more likely to get picked up. So um, dress up in your smartest gear, find somewhere that's got a good amount of um, natural light that's quite complementary as well um, so that it'll make you nice and photogenic. Um, Make sure you're not wearing any, um, anything that could detract from you in terms of really crazy loud jewelry or anything. You don't need to wear a hat or anything. Just you looking smart, professional, down to earth, get someone to take a shot. Even a photo on your, um, your mobile phone now, nowadays has got really good quality. And you can take heaps then and pick the best one out and get it up on your profile and go for it. Uh, thank you. And sorry, just a follow up question on that um, is what's your advice in getting those recommendations? I mean, of course, naturally, it's better for someone else already, uh, I guess, you know, posting recommendation on you. But how about asking for it? Is that something that, you know, um, we could do from, I guess, our business networks or our employer or even colleagues or peers? Yeah, definitely. Yes, it's really good to reach out. And there is a function if you scroll down on your profile page on LinkedIn, then um, you can actually go on there and um, request a recommendation from people in your network. And um, look, some people are busy, so don't just send it to one person. Just get in there, think about all the different people, connect with your old bosses, connect with your old clients, anyone you've worked alongside, um, connect with them all, and then um, get as many recommendations as you can. Um, and uh, it can really help boost your chances. Perfect, thank you. Lovely, thank you. Okay, so anybody else with any last questions? Uh, yes, I do, it's Katie okay. again. Um, and what's the uh, secret to a killer cover letter? <laughs> a concise killer cover letter <laughs> yeah and that's a good question concise is a good point as well so it's good to keep your cover letter on one page if you can unless of course you're being asked to address some kind of selection criteria and then it might be that your cover letter or your application does actually need to go into more detail so keep it to the point so put in there around um, perhaps what has interested you about that particular organization and you might make reference to um, something that you've seen in the news or it could be a press release on their website around some exciting innovation maybe they are um, like a, the Harris River estate down south where they've pivoted from going okay we're a winery 
and we were looking to do gin and now we're doing hand sanitizer. So <laughs> it might be, oh, I saw your wonderful article on SBS around your recent change and I'd really like to apply for the job of um, delivery person and so on and so forth. And so it shows that you've actually done a bit of research and um, that little bit of research provides a really good first impression. It shows that you um, really um, are motivated and you're hardworking and willing to go that extra mile, which is what people are looking for right now. And in terms of other elements of your cover letter, it's good to use that to address some of the key criteria. Um, you might want to use it as a way of bringing a hiring manager or recruiter's attention to certain key experience that you've had. So um, if you have um, had an amazing um, success with a particular project that's really relevant to where that organisation is at, that's where you might be able to expand on that. And for people like Andy and Kai who've mentioned they've got quite long resumes, lots of experience, um, then you can hint at things there and also sort of put down on, on your cover letter that there is a, um, a more extend, extensive version of your resume available on request as well. Great, thank you. Lovely, thanks Kate. Okay, any other questions from anybody? Lovely. Well, I'd like to say thank you so much for everybody for joining in today and uh, you will have your copy of the recording available soon. So feel free to share that with anybody else who you think might benefit from the session today. And I just want to wish you all the best um, in terms of your search for um, a new role or another role if you are um, just looking to add to your current employment at the moment to boost your income. and. Uh, yeah, please take care and uh, let's be kind to everybody and look out for each other in these difficult times. Okay, goodbye.